This is the Amazing Education Podcast. Powered by the Ames Community School District, I'm your host, Eric Smith. On today's episode, we are joined by Dr. Anthony Jones, Director of Equity for Ames Schools. We're going to have an amazing conversation as we reflect on the Black Lives Matter at School Week of Action that took place at the beginning of February. All right, Dr. Jones, thanks for being on this episode of the Amazing Education Podcast. How are you? Uh, doing well. Man, you're like a, uh, a regular guest on this episode now. I feel like we just did this not too long ago, and, right. and here we are again. So, yeah. I listen, I always appreciate... Um, you willing to come on and for this episode we're actually going to talk about a week that we just had black lives matter at school week of action and so we're going to take this podcast we're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of the week sort of what led up to it but then also take an opportunity for for us to reflect as a district as far as how it went for mm-hmm. us So give us a little bit of a backstory as far as Black Lives Matter at school, week of action. What was, how did it all come about? What was the purpose of of the week for us as a district? Right. So of course, you know, we've been involved with critical consciousness uh, training for the past four years, four or five years now. It seemed like it's been forever. Uh, But one of the things we've learned through critical consciousness is understanding what it means to have a critical conscious mindset. And that's basically being able to see uh, inequities in the system that disadvantage some and dis- advantage some and disadvantage others. And so having that mindset, uh, we began to look at our data differently. So, you know, the things that we were seeing, not just in outcomes based on grades and discipline, referrals and you know, attendance and so on and so forth. So. Uh, we began to say, okay, how can we look at our data in a different way? And so uh, one of the things that we did, of course, we looked at some strategies that we could do to address some of the fast data that we share with the board. Uh, But we wanted to see, okay, well, we haven't yet addressed, like, what does the curriculum look like? Uh, We haven't, at that point, we hadn't addressed, you know, basically the question, how are the children? Right. (laughs) And so we kind of presented that question to our team and then we kind of talked about it and discussed it. And one of the things that we looked at was that, you know, in terms of what is the everyday experience of our students specifically around curriculum, what is happening inside the classroom? And so um, uh, Black Lives Matters um, at School Week of Action was one of the things that came uh, to the forefront. It wasn't the first time that we had talked about Black Lives Matters at school. Uh, It actually started last year or a year ago, a year and a half ago now, it seemed like. Uh, But we had a a couple of elementary teachers to engage in it, you know, just by putting up posters. Uh, We had a conversation uh, with our admin team about it, and then it kind of just died down a little bit, and then it surfaced again as we began to look at how can we respond, one, to our data around FAST, and then coming out of the pandemic, you know, looking at our social and emotional learning around our students and their health and, uh, around social and emotional. And so uh, Black Lives Matters came up to the forefront. And so what we wanted to do, uh, specifically entering into, you know, MLK um, celebration and then enter into Black History Month, we wanted to begin to have more of a broad conversation about the different aspects of our students. And that's where the 13 guiding principles came in. And so uh, we presented that as a part of our response to the data that we were seeing. Again, consistently, our black and brown students uh, usually score the lowest uh, in our data. Um, And so we wanted to be able to say, okay, specifically for our black and brown students, we want to focus on them. We want to focus on our first grade students and then some other areas in terms of engagement. And so the 13 guiding principles gave us that structure to be able to address topics the first week of Black History Month. I think that's a great summary. I'm just going to, in full transparency, I'm already going off script here. Okay. I mean, you know, we had, we had some guiding no, questions fine. that were going to lead this discussion. That's fun <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. And, but one of the things that um, we shared 
on our website and we sent it to parents was some of the data around what sort of led up to this week and you alluded to it and one of those yeah. pieces was that for our secondary students sixth grade through 12th grade so our middle school and high school mm -hmm. based on a climate and culture survey that we conducted 14 percent responded favorably to the question of how often do students at your school have important conversations about race even when they might be uncomfortable why is it important for us as a school district to talk about race? Because I think it does make yeah. some people uncomfortable, and, mm -hmm. and, and we're right out there saying, listen, we're going to talk about this. You know, we, we talked about Black Lives Matter, and we're going to get into more of that as this episode goes on. But, mm -hmm. but why as a school district, why should we put an emphasis on, on talking about race? Right, because race, race matters. I mean, look at how we keep our data. Uh, we disaggregate it by race. Of course, there's other identity markers that we look at, but even as I mentioned earlier, you know, we know about five or six years ago, uh, it was posted across Ames Tribune and Des Moines Register that our black students in Ames were the lowest performing uh, identity groups in our district. Mm -hmm. And so uh, race is one of those, those things that people don't, they're not comfortable talking about, right? And so how can we center race in the conversation and address it head on. And so even again, going back to our critical consciousness training, we focus most of our conversation, our articles, our learning, all around race. Every now and then you'll hear someone try to bring in low SES or SES and, or socioeconomic status. Yep. But even in socioeconomic status, we know that typically you see the issues around race. And so we wanted to center race, specifically our black and our brown students. And when I say black and brown, I mean our African-American students and our Latinx students or Hispanic students. And so we wanted to begin to have conversations around that. And sometimes people are uncomfortable talking about race. And we figured if we can learn how to have more courageous conversations around race, then we can begin to address and attack other issues yeah. and other identity markers. So we wanted to start with race because we know that race uh, matters. So let's talk a little bit about the structure of the week and then ultimately what feedback have you received? You know, how, how did it go? So as a district, we adopted the, the principles. Yeah. And then from there, how did that get into the classrooms? Talk a little bit about that. Yep. So, of course, you know that we posted uh, the BLM at School Week of Action resource link. Now, the resource link is a national link. It's open to anyone who is interested in, in researching and investigating and learning about just the BLM at School Week of Action and all the resources. Yep. All of those resources are provided by educators from all over the nation. And so from Washington, D.C., uh, to Seattle, to Philadelphia, New York, um, you know, teachers have put in different lesson plans around the 13 guiding principles. Yeah. So we shared that broadly to our staff. But then we realized that everyone is not at the same learning level around understanding of equity yeah. or even learning how to implement these lessons yeah. into the classroom. Our teachers you're referring our teachers, to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so um, we, we split them up uh, into categories by novice. So if this is your first time hearing about Black Lives Matters, you yep. didn't even know what it means. Uh, you may have heard some things in the news and you had questions about it. We had a whole bunch of learning modules, links, podcasts, uh, YouTube videos, tech talks around conversations around Black Lives Matters at school and what it means. And then we had the uh, emerging and then we had the experience. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted our teachers to be engaged in this learning before they introduce any topics uh, to our students. And while we, what we were trying to do is we wanted to build up our confidence of our teachers and their knowledge and their skills as educators to be able to pick and choose or create their own lessons to be able to implement the guiding principles. Yep. And so those were the steps that we took. And then we, uh, from the equity office, uh, we provided like, you know, staff who would be there, whether in the building, we have building equity building capacity teams there, and uh, we had them waiting in place to be able to support those teachers who needed a little more discussion and dialogue around implementing um, the 13 guiding principles. So that's what we did uh, to prepare our teachers. I'm going to go back a little bit to um, talking a little bit about the purpose because I think it's worth pointing out that the purpose of this, this week in another way was to show that our schools and our districts, they're inviting for all of our students. Absolutely. Can, can you speak to that a little bit? 
yeah. more. I mean, I know you, you referenced some of the data and, uh-huh. and stuff like that before, but I actually had a, I had a conversation with a parent who, um, from a, a philosophical or a religious standpoint, felt as though they disagreed with what we were doing during that week. And, and the more that I talked to that parent, mm-hmm. I kind of I, I concluded and I told the parent this. I said, it, it seems like we're a lot more aligned yeah. than, than what we were at the beginning of this conversation because ultimately the purpose was around providing an in, inviting environment for our students and, and all of our students to have a voice in our buildings, in our classrooms, with their mm-hmm. teachers, with their classmates. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything more to say about that? I I mean, mean, ultimately, you know, our job as one of our roles as a school system is to create a a sense of belonging and inclusive environment for all of our students. Again, we've talked about this before. I try to put this in every time I speak to people publicly, uh, even one on one, is that as a district, we have made a commitment to equity and access. And basically, when you sum it up, it's for all of our students, right? And so, in order to be able to be a district that commits itself to equity and access, we have to look at how our students are experiencing their education on a daily basis. And so what we wanted to do is to begin to discuss and to be able to create um, an environment that, that all students are inclusive, are included. Uh, so we wanted to do a better job of creating uh, value, uh, a sense of worthiness, uh, and how do we do that as educators? We put it in, in the curriculum because we are educators, we teach, and so we wanted to make sure that conversations, books, uh, lessons, discussions in classrooms from PK to 12th grade uh, were all having conversations around um, differences, uniqueness, uh, identity, yeah. uh, all those different aspects, and we wanted those students to feel affirmed in the classrooms. So. I think we knew this was coming, you know, the weeks leading up to the first week in February. I just want to give a shout out to you because I know you and I had to collaborate a lot because this was a huge news cycle in central Iowa. I mean, I know you were on every TV station. You talked with the Tribune. I connected you with with local radio. and, And now you're here again talking about the podcast. And then I reflect on that. And I don't know if I am you know, happy that it that it was a huge news item or maybe even a little bit sad that I think what we're doing in the district isn't just the norm. I think the reason why it was such a, a news cycle mm-hmm. was because it was very different than what yeah. is done really in, in other districts. And so mm-hmm. I guess I just want to give you a shout out um, for that. But in our communications plan, you know, we talk about two things. We want to be responsive to the media, yeah. but we also want to tackle the tough stuff, tackle Absolutely. the tough topics. And, and I'm a little sad that this is considered a tough topic, <laughs> but I think that, you know, right. we, we have all felt that, that it is a little bit. And, and one of the biggest things that we've experienced here as the district was boy our our analytics on our website and our social media boy they they jumped up over the last yeah. week mm-hmm. and there was just a lot of hatred yeah out there um mm-hmm. people can, i mean they can go to our facebook page now and they you know it's still there we, we left it up there and but there was just a lot of a lot of hatred like what right. what feelings did that kick up for you just like yeah. and i'm sure you got emails oh, yeah. and and all the stuff oh, yeah. so uh, it was, to me, you know, with uh, either reading, receiving emails, or even speaking to parents who were opposed to what we were doing, um, it, it, the word that comes to mind is, is disappointing. Uh, the reason I say disappointing because uh, Ames has been, you know, involved with a lot of conversations around how do we build a more inclusive Ames. Now, think about that. Uh, we always brag and boast about the diversity in Ames, especially in comparison to other districts around us, especially sure. in Central Iowa, yep. besides uh, Des Moines. Uh, but we always brag and boast about that, uh, which which is interesting because the panorama survey that you referred to earlier, uh, when we when we asked the questions, there were different topics that we we asked, like centered around, and the diversity question was the highest. It was around 74, 75% of students responded favorably to the diversity that we have. But it was 34% of cultural awareness. And to me, it's very telling is that as Ames, we've always been proud and boasted about the diversity. Of course, we have the privilege of being 
right in the vicinity with Iowa State University. Yeah, so we receive mm-hmm. a lot of the diversity, right? And so we've always boasted about that. And so it was just kind of disappointing to say, okay, I've been in meetings with many of you in the community. I've heard you talk about how proud you are about the diversity and you want to be involved with, you know, in some organization they use the word racial reconciliation. And we've been involved in those conversations, but then when it came down to, okay, let's specifically um, focus on intersectionality, many aspects uh, in, in, in identities within the black community, um, there were issues and concern. And the phrase that I saw a lot, whether it was written, whether it was talked about in the media, is that this diversity went too far. Interesting. <laughs> How does diversity go go too far? <laughs> well, when you put it that then, way, I don't I don't know how to respond to that. How does diversity go too far? I yeah. mean, like, is there like a range where you know, like, you know, eighty percent of conversation around diversity it needs to happen around? And I, you know, I'm I'm gonna like be sarcastic. You yeah. know, we can only talk about Dr. Martin Luther King right. and Rosa Parks yep. and George Washington Carver. And, oh, yeah, the Jack Trice. Jack right? Trice. We can throw you Jack know, Trice in You there. know we have a stadium uh, yeah. named or a field named yep. after Jack Trice, right? So is that the range that aims is, you know, the the um, the courage that we have around yeah. diversity and conversation? Is that the range? I mean, because it, it, surpri- it was sad. It was disappointing because there has been a lot of time put in, I mean, in aims. I think three or four years we've had organizations come together Mm -hmm. to learn. We've we've invited keynote speakers. I can imagine how much that caused to bring them in. Uh, National known speakers. Uh, We've we've split up into groups and we've had enjoyable conversations around how to build up aims. And then I feel like what happened in the media uh, has caused us to step back Mm -hmm. as a district, uh, as a community. And so uh, that was disappointing to hear. Uh, it made me feel like, especially as a, a black man in living in Ames, uh, it made me feel like, you know, uh, the things that I've heard other people say who didn't, do not look like me, uh, it was not sincere and genuine. And so uh, that was very sad. It confirmed a lot of things that in my conversations with uh, other African-American or black families or students that I've sat with, um, those feelings that they've had in the community, the interactions they've had with certain groups of people in the community, it confirmed what they were feeling. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh no, you know, this is Ames, you know, we're diverse, you know, we have, yeah. we have, you know, building inclusive Ames organizations. We've been working with all these different things. And so it was just disappointing to see um, people come out in waves. And, and, and we're talking about students. Yeah. Right. And so yep. it, it wasn't like, you know, um, at the city hall on front of the, you know, in front of the building screaming on a soapbox yeah. about, you know, refer, words I've heard, propaganda and liberal and Marxist. It's like, you know, why do we go to these name calling? We're talking about students yeah. in a public school environment. Yeah. And one of the things I've said is that for schools, we receive everyone. Yep. We don't stand at the door and say, okay, are you conservative? Are you liberal? Okay, <laughs> conservatives, you, you got to go somewhere else. Liberals, come on in. Yeah. You know, are no, we you, don't get you know, that. you cyclones. Or, <laughs> yeah. You know, always make the jokes about uh, sports. But we don't separate no. families. We, we receive all of them. But what we've done uh, by within our educational system, yeah. we've kind of caused sy- um, systemic segregation, sometimes unintentionally, but other times in- intentionally, because why? We don't want to be uncomfortable. And so parents, uh, those who opposed, were very uncomfortable thinking that we were indoctrinating or that we are indoctrinating our students. I mean, that's some, we have some good teachers. Mm-hmm. They're not really that good to be able to indoctrinate <laughs> no. a whole population of no. students in one week. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they're not. I'm just saying, we have some great teachers. Yep. But one week, we can indoctrinate a, a whole... Um, whole group of population of students. And so, you know, I say that uh, sarcastically, but uh, really it was it was disappointing. I feel like it has caused us to take a step backwards yeah. in our work around equity in the community specifically. So, and, and I know that there is a lot of, um, the conversation needs to continue in our community. And, yeah. and I'm proud of the fact that as a district, w- we chose to further that conversation in our community. If anything, I think it did that. Right. So when I look at yeah. our, our social media, yeah. 
I, it was a heavy weekend. The weekend, uh, you know, I think we we published on Friday the the Black Lives Matter. You know, we had a week leading up to the week, and that weekend was a pretty heavy weekend. In that, you know, I'm on my phone, I'm looking through all the comments, and like mm-hmm. you just like you just feel like this hatred come from like your phone and reading all this stuff on social media, and right. and you think it's a reflection, and then we get to Monday and we have a school board meeting and and we felt in in many ways the exact opposite. And and I've never, I I really appreciate the fact that we can have disagreements in our community and, and continue to talk about things. And then what we found out is all, a lot of that hatred, not all of it, but, but some of it came from outside of our community and it came from, and and I've experienced this before through social media, but it came from outside our community. And then we start to see things you referred to one, one word indoctrination and we see a lot of other name calling. Mm -hmm. And then we all, and then we also see the, well, what about all lives? All lives matter. Talk about the, the all lives matter thing. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I mean, all lives do matter. Sure. I mean, you know, when you look at the way our structural systems are created, you know, safety and all of those things, they're all set up. When we look at our medical field, when we look at structures, you yeah. know, from, you know, how we create roads, you know, the speed limit, all of those things that we have to monitor around public safety and taking care of our neighbors, they're all set up so that all lives matter, right? Yeah. The problem is with that is that it's in response to when someone says Black Lives Matter, right? You only hear it as a response to. Yeah. And so it's almost like, you know, it, you know when they say all lives matter, what I hear is that all lives matter except <laughs> black lives. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's almost like a disclaimer. Like, no. We want to make sure that when we look at what happened with George Floyd, and trust me, George Floyd is not the first one. No. He's kind of like the no, no, no. the apex, almost in a sense. Uh, there been, there has been many other horrible deaths. Breonna yeah. Taylor. Yeah. I mean, Ahmaud Arbery. Mm-hmm. I mean, that one affect me a lot. You know, yeah. being a person that you know goes out into my community yeah. and runs and jogs and things like that, and love to exercise. That whole scenario with Ahmaud mm-hmm. Arbery, it was very scary, and so. Um, When we look at, you know, the lives who have been taken away from Mm -hmm. us, unarmed people, right, in the safety, well, sometimes safety in their own homes, um, doing nothing, you know, no more differently than anyone else, and we see a man die right in front of our eyes, again, eight minutes and 46 seconds, and I do not recall, as long as I've been on this earth, as long as I've been studying other things, seeing anyone else that didn't look like George Floyd yeah. die like this. No. I mean, just think about it. When you think about all race, you know, why do we center race, right? Yeah. I can't imagine. I can't, I, I do not recall, and I'm quite sure there are some other horrific things that have happened out there. But the whole setup from the way the officer was calmly uh, kneeled on his neck, the way no one stepped in uh, to rescue uh, this man, the whole scenario and the whole event, the way it took place, um, that was a symbol that um, obviously all lives do not matter. Yeah. And when you think in terms of lives, typically black lives have been the one that have um, been taken away from us in horrific ways. Yeah. And so no justice, right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, um, so when you think in terms of that, those who created that phrase, I mean, I thought it was it was wise. It was so strategic and 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 clear because we want to be intentional. We know all lives matters. We we fight for that, right? We yep. we we set up our day so that we take care of each other because all lives matters. But what we've been seeing is that obviously all lives don't matter based upon what we're seeing. That's in the street, right? Those are the things we've seen in the community. But then when we talk about do all lives matter within the school, every year we take assessments. Every year we take assessments. Every year we, we, you know, we look at our office referrals. We look at our suspension rates. Who is out of school suspended more often than any other is typically our black and brown students. Yeah. Who is failing in the system 
is typically our black and brown students. When I receive a book or you know, a, a lesson plan or a worksheet from my children's school, I'm more than likely not going to see my children represented in the book or the paperwork that yeah. they sent home. So it's almost an erasing, and, and, and you know, we've talked about this, it's, it's like almost like curriculum violence toward our black and brown students. It's an erasing of, uh, of a race. Yeah. And so uh, I say to those who say all lives matter, I also say, yes, all lives do matter. But right now we're focusing on what is happening in horrible ways to our black yeah. lives, pe- or our black students, yeah. and our black people in the community. Well, and it's looking at, that's taking in, you know, you, you provided a lot of examples. There's, you know, national data and statistics, but when you even look at, at local, yes. in, in our buildings, we look at our data. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, let's do something. Right. And I, I guess I just don't, I don't understand why that is bad. Right. Well, I, what, I know you don't. I, I mean, I really don't. don't. I yeah. really don't understand mm-hmm. why, why mm-hmm. that is bad. So, I mean, we could peel back this onion more oh, and more and more. Oh, so... Yeah. This week happened, you know, the week happened, Black Lives Matter at school, the week of action, that happened. We got tons of good feedback. Oh, yeah. um, you and I just got an email today from one of our elementary building principals, kind of compi- compiled some some yeah. teacher and parent feedback. We got a lot of positive feedback yeah, around it. I mean, we really did. Uh-huh. Um, we got a lot of the other stuff, too, and, and we'll deal with that. But we yeah. got a lot of really positive stuff. And so we're still in Black History Month. But, you know, our, our goal is to embed this learning throughout the school year this isn't a a one week thing it's not a one month thing Mm -hmm. it's to embed it throughout and I think we're taking steps in that direction and now we're already have our eyes on you know what next year's Black Lives Matter at at school week of action and so what are some takeaways that that you've had in in a couple minutes I guess (laughs) (laughs) one is that it you know it was a lot of conversation about people opting out and Dr. Hawkins shared some interesting data with us you know, he said, you know, approximately we have around 4,500 students in the district. That week, last week, the data that he shared with us was that we only had 97 students to opt out mm-hmm. out of somewhere over 4,000 yep. students. Uh, that was uh, tremendous data to be yeah. able to see. Yes, there was a lot of negative um, feedback and, you know, people call in and send, you know, some, some horrific things, but 97 students yep. only. Very opted. small percentage. Very small percentage. Yeah. I think overall 98% of students right. attended school last week. That was positive. Mm-hmm. Um, what this has shared, you know, reflecting back, one of the things I know that we want to do is, is to continue to educate our teachers, our administrators, uh, our parents about the 13 guiding principles. Uh, there are, were some words that were mentioned in mentioned inside of the principles that mm-hmm. kind of took people, rub people the wrong way. Yep. Words like dismantling, yep. which is a word that's really used in uh, social construction theory, you know, okay. um, in critical theory. And so those are some things that we really need to back up and make sure that the use of language is understood. Mm-hmm. You know, dismantling or disrupt does not mean that we're going to come and, you know, people are going to go and, and, you know, tear the building up or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but that those are construct. Those are words that are opposite to construct because we know and understand that race is socially constructed. It's built. It's created. So dismantling means that we want to dismantle or disrupt the idea of race mattering to the point that it determines whether whatever race you are, it determines how successful you're going to be in a public school setting. That's what we want to disrupt. That's yeah. what we want to dismantle. So I, 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 looking back, I know we're going to need to do a lot of more, a lot more uh, education around uh, language, use of words. Yeah. Um, get it out sooner. Uh, so, <laughs> yep. um, and, and, you know, that's a, that's a uh, criticism, you know, even I have on myself as leading the director of um, the equity, of, equity office is that we got to get those materials out. They have it now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> some people have done, did their own research. And so, uh, but more so than the community, I want to make sure our teachers are confident and have an understanding of what the 13 guiding principles mean. Yeah. Because, you know, I feel like just like those educators nationally have put together lesson plans, I feel like we have skilled teachers in our district who can look at those 13 guiding principles and create lesson plans that that is authentic to them, that is sincere, and that when they teach it, they're teaching it from their own 
level and understanding uh, to be able to teach it in a way that relates and resonates yeah. uh, with their students. So uh, looking back, those are some things that we wanted to be able to do. Uh, also reframe, it's, it's not a curriculum. Yeah. I mean, we go back and forth, you know, some of the people that I really lean on and have conversations with, I've asked that question, like, is it really, a, is Black Lives Matter at school, week of action, is it really a curriculum? And some of the questions I receive back is like, what is curriculum? I'm like, come on. <laughs> we're going to have this conversation right now. Yeah, right. That, <laughs> that's maybe a separate. Wanna, that's a separate conversation. <laughs> but when you look at it, it they, were, they, are, they are learning uh, instructional resources. Yeah. We pick and choose. And so um, those are some of the things, again, clearing up language, uh, getting information out to our parents, making sure that our teachers are built up in confidence and our administrators understanding what the 13 guiding principles uh, mean. And, and, you know, just, just kind of be in the forefront and let people know that yeah. we're not trying to uh, indoctrinate anyone. Right. We're adding to the conversations that uh, many of our teachers are already having in the classroom yeah. about identities and, you know, how we learn about history, how we learn about science, how yeah. we read bo different books, you know, how do we engage our students. And so we're yeah. having those conversations. We're just providing more resources to be able to add to the conversation. Yeah. And that's our role as educators. We're supposed to bring all different views inside of the classroom so our students can be critical thinkers. Then they can pick and choose. Yep. They can pick and choose what they want to do. Yep. But we want we want them to know that when they leave the classroom and the bell rings, they're walking the hallway, they're sitting in the cafeteria, they're on the bus, that they know how to interact with, with differences yeah. and, and uniqueness in a way that's respectful, in a way that provides dignity, in a way that's honorable. Well, I I appreciate you know you coming on and and taking time to reflect on the week. You know the the news requests are dying down. The the, yes. the emails are yeah I know right <laughs> and and I think if we had waited until we got it perfect yeah it still wouldn't have gone perfectly yeah, and we wouldn't have ever done it. That's and true. so I think to 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 live our purpose for equity and access. You got to dive in, yeah. and you got to do it, and it's not going to be always the cleanest thing in the world. Yeah. But I, I, I think we can take pride in the fact that we have a lot of takeaways going into Absolutely. next year, and we're going to continue the conversation. Yeah. So, well, with that, Dr. Jones, I want to thank you for being on this episode of the Amazing Education Podcast. Uh, you know, everyone who's listening, I hope you're interested in this topic and, and you share it with others because I think this is a, a conversation that can be had not only in our community here in Ames, Iowa, but across the state and really across the country. And, uh, and again, I thank you for being on this episode. Thank you for having me.